Hey everyone, welcome back to Couch Conversations with Sasha Love. I'm your host, Sasha Love, and the title of one of our first episodes of the series, Rediscovering You, is Being Real. Now, I think one of the most helpful aspects of my own healing journey and my own journey throughout life and rediscovering who I am one of the most important things in that journey is being real. I feel like for a huge portion of my life, I was so used to wearing a mask. And not to say that it was always like a terrible thing to do because in certain situations, it calls for you know different versions of yourself. For example, for me at work, I'm more professional, I'm more to the point, I'm very direct, I'm a critical thinker, I'm more logical. Whereas in other settings, I may be a little bit more creative and you know, kind of like meshing with the flow. But somewhere along the lines, adjusting to situations just became a way for me to hide. What do I mean by that? Like, for example, sometimes it was hard for me to know the difference, to know the difference of simply adjusting to an environment that I'm in versus knowing who I truly am. Growing up or in life in general, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of there are a lot of voices that are teaching us, that are sending us messages in various forms, whether it's in social media, whether it's the TV that we watch, the movies that we see, the people we've grown up with, who raised us, um, the friends we had, the school we went to, the college we went to, the job we have, the people we marry, like, there's a lot of influence, there's a lot of messages, there's a lot of information out there. And sometimes it can be hard to know what is you and what isn't. So when I decided to kind of figure this out and embark on this journey, one of the things that I had to do was just be real. And one of the hardest things to do when you're being real is saying, I don't know. Like there are moments that I would say, I don't know what it is that I like. I don't know what it is that I would normally do if I didn't have so-and-so's voice in my ear or this person's um, perception of me in mind. Sometimes I simply did not know what was the right way to go if someone didn't tell me what to do or if I didn't seek advice from 30 different people. And I had to sit in that space and ask myself some pretty tough questions. I also had to be real about myself, about things that I didn't like, things that I did like. As I continued this journey, that was also another aspect of being real. So one part was simply saying, I don't know. And then over time, trial and error, figuring out what I like, what I don't like, then it became about what is it that I like? What is it that I don't like? What is it that I stand for? What is it that I don't stand for? And again, sometimes, I don't know, <laughs> would still pop up. But the point was for me to be real. Because without being grounded in understanding what is true, I was always going to flow and move and bend and curve and continue wearing all of these masks and costumes and suits 
to fit the different situations that I was in and continue being in a space of feeling lonely, of feeling lost, of feeling confused, of not feeling grounded. And I don't know about you, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, that isn't a way to live life, at least not in a meaningful way. Another aspect of being real was learning to peel off the mask. And if I'm being real with you, sometimes I was scared about what I would uncover. I was scared that I would not like what I saw. I was afraid of having to deal with that. You know, it's easy and it's tempting to want to be perfect, you know, when I was dealing with people, interacting with people, and trying to say the right word, and trying to do the right thing, and trying to, you know, give the right appearances. But then when the cameras went away, when the attention went away, and I was left with me and my stuff, that was scary. And I needed to acknowledge all of the emotions that came as I uncovered layer by layer by layer by layer all the things about myself, both pleasant and unpleasant, both concerning and hopeful. You see, to understand who you are, and I think by extension to gain understanding of other people that we love and care about in our lives, it's important to see ourselves as we are. There is no point, there was no point for me in continuing life pretending like I wasn't gonna face all the things that, that were a part of who I was or who I am. There was no point. Either I was going to face it, deal with it, address it, and move through life the way God intended for me. Or continue living and playing this role and playing this act for the rest of my life. I had to make a choice. And I chose to face the mess. To face the chaos. And for someone like me who is very organized and... I like things a certain way. I like things to be very predictable and organized and being a recovering perfectionist and people pleaser. <laughs> it was hard. It was hard to realize that there were some traits that I didn't think existed or didn't want to acknowledge existed. So, I guess the last thing about being real with yourself is that sometimes you just need that time with yourself. For me, it, I'm very good at <laughs> being a version of myself that I suspect or I anticipate other people would appreciate. You know, someone who's nice and sweet and agreeable and, you know, will never go against the grain and does what they're told and like, you know, is simply like falls in line accordingly, you know, for as an example. So I knew, I know how to put on that costume and get it done play that role to take a step back and really examine myself there were times and there were seasons where I needed to remove myself from people from situations from spaces to heal and to work on myself now don't get it twisted I believe it is a Community is a huge part of healing. It's, an, it's a very important part of healing. 
but it isn't the only part. And I felt like in my journey, it was necessary to sit in quiet. And that's both literal and also metaphorical because in reality, I couldn't just take a year long sabbatical and be secluded in an island all by myself. You know, there were some seasons, there were some times, there were some days even where it was just me. I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have anything on my schedule. I wasn't working. So I could sit in quiet and just literally face the emotions, face what I had experienced, what I had gone through, face the damage I had caused myself and the damage I had caused others, to face the trauma that I went through, to face the pain, the tears, the anger, the joy, the relief, the curiosity. I needed to be in this space by myself to face that. Because sometimes when all the spotlights are gone, for someone, for, for where I was in my life, that's the space I needed to be to finally start being real with myself. And I wish I could say it was like this, aha, like, oh my gosh, I'm doing the work. I'm doing the shadow work. It's great. It's amazing. I'm finding out all this stuff about me. I'm making all these boundaries. Mm, no, <laughs> it was not like that. There were moments where I kind of felt like, okay, I'm doing something. But that came much later and as my therapist would tell me, because I would often ask her, like, how would I even know? How do I even know I'm making progress? Like, how do, we, how do I even know that I'm moving forward and I'm even doing this whole thing right by myself? Like, how, how do I know? I, I felt a lot of those things later on, like the confidence and the joy and the peace and the sense of security and feeling secure. That came later on. But in the beginning, it felt awkward. It felt weird. There are days I felt like, man, like I just feel like I'm in a well of despair and depression because there's a lot of mess, you know, and things that I felt like I thought I had dealt with that I had put to bed coming to the surface again, like it was messy. It was confusing. It was crazy. And sometimes I felt like, or a lot of times I felt like I wasn't doing it right. I didn't feel like I was doing it right. Um, and even now, sometimes I'm like, am I even doing it right? But anyways, I, it was a hard process. It was a hard journey. And I felt like there was a part of it that I needed to do alone to kind of face that reality. So, of course, we'll talk more and like expound on more things and add more things and kind of share other examples and, you know, I'll share more of my story too. But for now, I guess I kind of want to stop here and just summarize, like, what are the, what is the big take home from what I just shared with you in this video? Remember. The title of the segment is Be Real. Excuse me. If there's anything you take away from this, it's being real. So number one, be real with yourself. There's no point in hiding or pretending if your goal is to really discover who you are and learn to love and fully embrace you. The second thing is if you need it, take the time to be in your own space. And it doesn't have to be for five years, a year. It can be if that's what you need, if that's the space that you need. But sometimes all you need are a few moments in a day consistently, or maybe an hour every week, or sometimes set aside every month. However you wanna carve out that time in solitude, 
take that time so that you can face what it is that you need to face. And the third thing is be honest with yourself about what you see and how you feel about it. It's okay if some of the things that you find about yourself fill you with joy and excitement and like, yes, I'm awesome. That's totally fine. But it's also okay to discover things about yourself that make you think, dang, like, oof, that's messy. That's a little ugly. I don't know. You know, it's okay. That's part of the process of facing and embracing all of you is seeing all there is to be seen and being okay with number one, not knowing it all at once. And number two, knowing that whatever you discover, you'll choose to be present and process it the way you need to process it. So hopefully you find this helpful. Please leave your thoughts and comments below, your questions, um, maybe even some of your progress to your own journey as well. And again, you can always reach out to me via Instagram at Council Conversations or at CC Sasha Love. And you can also find me via email at SashaLoveCC at gmail.com. So until next time, take care.